Hello everybody, let's talk about the second movement from Beethoven's fifth cello sonata. The chorale in the beginning has been described as a funeral march. I suggest you and your pianist um, think of subdividing uh, those A's, uh, so... <laughs> Think of maybe subdividing into four beats each eighth in your head, obviously, so that not only helps being together, but also helps uh, you feel grounded. Let's listen to Heliger Danke Sang from uh, Beethoven's Quartet Opus 132. In our chorale too, we hear uh, that Gregorian chant that you just heard in the quartet, uh, ancient sounds. Um, except the hairpin in bar seven and eight, uh, everything else is uh, flat. Um, there aren't peaks and valleys, and uh, of course, don't forget the mezza voce. In bar nine, the pianist starts a new figure. Let's compare this to the ghost trio. You can hear that Beethoven wrote the same exact rhythmic figure. Uh, the Ghost Trio was written also around the same time that this uh, sonata was written. Let's now listen to the slow movement of Piano Sonata Opus 101. Uh, this is obviously uh, Opus 102. This figure... <laughs> bar 10 and again bar 11 and bar 12 uh, is lugubrious. It is not a quick turn. In uh, bar 21 we again come back to the chorale. Mm -hmm. starts the B section of this movement. Uh, we are in D major and the weight, that heavy weight, has lifted. Uh, in contrast to the dark mood and ambiguous feel of the previous section, we are singing. Uh, this is bar 28. Uh, <laughs> Also notice the intervals are bigger as opposed to the beginning where the intervals are confined uh, so a very limited movement so <laughs> to this we have here uh, bigger intervals in bar 39 change the mood uh, on the G the vibrato changes and during the descend descending uh, triplets the mood transforms here As always, uh, I encourage you to study the score, uh, practice with the score. Uh, in bar uh, 40, for example, we uh, the, the pianist has 16th notes and we're playing. So don't over dot your, um, your uh, dotted rhythm because you want to align with the pianist's 16th notes. So... Second notes. Uh, so, in other words, give your thirty-second notes their full value. In 
bar 42, you can go into the high A or away from it. Uh, either way, this is an important point uh, in the movement. So. Uh, <laughs> into the A, I think, and the G sharp, um, your vibrato should warm up on the G sharp. It is always the uh, note before the peak of the phrase that should be um, showing, leading us to that peak of the phrase. So, uh, <laughs> Those ornament-like uh, passages in bar 43 and 44 uh, should be pensive. Don't rush them. Uh, <laughs> one we're back to D minor and um, this is the third section of the movement uh, the piano is playing the, uh, the chorale from the opening of the movement and the cello makes comments um, these are not happy comments in my opinion um, so maybe it's not uh, but that's not it for me it's uh, something like that. Um, again, give each note its full value uh, and play with gravitas seriousness. <laughs> Bar 63 uh, to 66, we have remnants of the chorale. Bar 67 starts the final section of this movement, uh, the coda. So, into the G. This uplifting G. Let's compare the dotted figure in bar 70 to bar 29, uh, which is the sunny part of this movement. So... So um, this also has some sunniness in it, um, but uh, it is short-lived, in my opinion. We are remembering, it's more of a remembrance of what happened before. I like placing the downbeat of bar 73, uh, so... Um, <laughs> it and we're with them and uh, bar 77 there is uh, should be very very little vibrato maybe no vib at all um, let's play from 76 <laughs> So um, we don't know where we're going. Um, bar 79 and 80 bring us to an unexpected C sharp minor. Uh, so. <laughs> with the pianist, listen to recordings so you know uh, it is extremely important to know the piano part here. Um, 
And uh, here we are in kind of no man's land. certain feel uh, or however you decide to play those um, it's a sense of insecurity we don't know where we're going and uh, your playing should not be too okay <laughs> Uh, next time we'll talk about the fuel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.